you know what I mean? I'm just in White House from Sheffield now. I was born at Wuthel. I'm just happy to put on a red and white shirt and to earn a living and put a roof on me. head, you know what I mean? I honestly did not see him coming because he hit me from side. I knew I'd done it. I knew I'd done my knee. It went snap, bang, pop, crack. He did threaten some of Paul Vale players. Did you ever get an apology from, from Gareth Ainsworth? I've not really spoke to anybody or I've not really come out doing an interview and said what I needed to say. I'm going to make an exception because I'm 51 years old. It was 20 odd years ago. People need to know. This is the Chef United Way podcast. Our next guest served United for his entire professional career. A player who lived our dream and went from fan to first team playing over 250 times and scoring over 50 goals from his position on the left. It is the legend, and I don't use that word too often, Dane Whitehouse. Welcome, Dane. How are you today? Uh, I'm fine, Al. Uh, nice to meet you, mate. Hey, up, Nick. How are you going, mate? Not bad. Thank you very much. It's absolutely fantastic to have you on. Hal has been going on about getting you on for such a long time, and he's probably going to be fangirling you for a lot of this. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a pleasure, mate. It's a pleasure. Well, can I just say the reason for that is we all had that player that we were in the schoolyard on the playing fields when we were a kid. I'm left footed. I'm the same height. I used to have curly hair. <laughs> Dane Whitehouse was that player for me. So you make Al, you're making me feel old, mate. Sorry. You're making sorry. me feel really old. But <laughs> um, cheers for the compliments. Uh, I try my best, mate. <laughs> that's what. That's all we want as Sheffield United fans. That is all we want. And I think you try, I think you did a bit more than just try your best. You were obviously a very good player. Anyway, we'll get into it. We'll start the podcast off now. So how did you get into the professional game? We all know that you started at the Blades, but do you want to tell us a bit more about it? Yeah. As you all know, you, you play for your local side. Um, I was very fortunate that my school teacher at the time, this is when I were 11 years old, uh, my school teacher was uh, the assistant manager of Sheffield Boys. I, I played for Sheffield Boys for 11 to 14. And then because you're playing for your city, you tend to get a lot of scouts come and, and, and watch them types of games. And Sheffield United came and invited me to, um, to do some out of school training, you know, when school holidays were. I did go to other clubs, but because Sheffield United were involved and Sheffield United were pursuing it more than anybody else, uh, and with Sheffield United being my hometown club, I um, I ended up uh, signing for Sheffield Sheffield United uh, under 14 level. And then I had two years at school excellence. And then I, um, I left school and, and signed apprenticeship forms. Let's talk about some of the names that you remember, Dane, from your time coming through at United back then. Who were some of the guys you would have been playing with? Um, well, when I was 16, um, we were just going through a sticky patch. Um, with jo- I think it, uh, Billy McEwen had just took over as manager. Um, we were down at lower leagues, I think, at the time. But I think it was the old second of it, if I'm... My memory's not too good, mate, to be fair. But it's, it's, I'm talking like eight, 1986 here, do you know what I mean? So it's, uh, I think we, we was in the old second division. And I think we got relegated in playoffs. Did we get, were it playoff? Um, they did a playoff final, didn't they? But I think we lost to Bristol City in both legs. Uh, and we got relegated under Billy McEwen. And then uh, that was when I was 16. And the team at that time, uh, Bill McEwen bought a few players in. We also had a few young lads, Clive Mendonca, if you yeah. remember Clive Mendonca, oh, yeah. coming out at youth team. Uh, Chris Marsden, uh, yeah. he played a few games. We had, I think we made a record sign as well, Richard Cadet. Uh, yeah. Santa Ford, if you can remember him. Yeah. Richard Cadet. I think he was the record sign in 300 grand. And I, I, I cleaned his boots. Uh, <laughs> so we had some we had some decent players, um, but then Dave Bassett came and then he just totally ripped side a bit to bits. <laughs> um, 
we got relegated and then well he, he I think he came just towards end of season just before we got relegated but he couldn't he couldn't keep us in the league and um, we ended up dropping down into the old third division and then that's when in that summer Dave Bassett ended up bringing all his players in uh, and then the probably two of most famous names which were two of probably Dave Bassett's ever greatest signings were Tony Garner and Brian Dean yeah um, you, you can't deny what a strike force that was for, t- for three years. What a strike force. Uh, good friends of mine, still good friends to this day. Um, but having said that, we had we we ended up having a decent side. Um, Dave Bassett brought a lot of players in from London, uh, and as as you all know, me being a Sheffield lad, with a few other Sheffield lads, I've, I've never come across a Londoner before. <laughs> um, they're a different breed. They're a different breed, but I think what happened was because we were all working together and we were playing football together, we 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 tended to click really well. Um, we understood their humour. They understood our humour. They understood our work ethics. They we understood their work ethics, and I think we all clicked as a team. Uh, and then gradually, Dave Bassett started to bring other players in: Glenn Hodges, Kevin Gage, John Gannon, Simon Tracy. Oh God, I, c- I could go on forever here. Do you know what I mean? Some it's, names. They were mm. some great names, and they were just great players. Do you know what I mean? They, you, they, they weren't your Ian Wrights, they weren't your Brian Robsons, you know what I mean? They weren't, they weren't your um, Tony Adams or, or, or what have you, but do you know to, to play with these players week in, week out? Uh, and and to be up against it most weeks as well, uh, because on the under Dave Bassett, I mean, we, we got two promotions and then we ended up, we ended up getting promoted at Leicester away, um, which were a great experience. Um I didn't, I didn't play myself, but um, I was injured. I got injured against Man- Manchester United um, in, I think, it was quarterfinals of the cup uh, season before. Uh, so I didn't play. But you look at that. You look at them that side and them players, and then what we did and where we got uh, some fantastic players. You scored many great goals for the Blades in your time. Uh, have you got any that stand out? <laughs> I know I where you're leading we'll... to it. I know exactly <laughs> yep. where you're leading to it. <laughs> now, do you want me to do? You, do you want me to describe a goal which were like a thirty-yard screamer, or do you want me to describe a goal which were probably most important goals in my life? Well, I mean, it's it's obvious that you could talk about those goals in '92, '91, home and away against the pigs. You yeah. know, for a local lad, I'm being a blade, but you know, sometimes it might be just like. That's that scruffy goal away at Grimsby when you dived into the crowd and uh, you know everyone's ruffling your hair. You know it. It might be one for you that meant more than we'd ever realise. You know for other reasons. So you you might have I any think, goal. Um, do you know when you when you're in schoolyard now and or when you're playing for your school team or when you if you're playing for your Sunday league side, if you hit one from thirty yards and it goes into the top corner, you you're buzzing, aren't you? But then if you're playing against a team that you don't like or you're playing against a top of table clash or whatever or or a relegation battle and you put one in from two yards out it's still same importance isn't it you know what I mean but I do I've scored some decent goals I've scored some decent goals um, I, I, I've got a decent left foot on me and, and it was quite accurate um, I've scored some volleys I've scored some from outside the box uh, but I, I do have to say, Alan, Nick, that probably the ones what stick out most for me and the most important ones for me were the Derby goals. Yeah. And we wouldn't yeah. expect you to say anything <laughs> else. I mean, there are <laughs> there are others and that, I, and I, that I, I know I, Blades I'm fans not, will picture. I know, I'm, I, and I don't want to, I don't want to sound, I mean, how can I put it? I, I don't want to sound big editor about it, do you know what I mean? Or, or whatever, but it meant so much to me as a person and even and even to my family and even to to every single United fan in that in them grounds that day and even to some of my friends who are Wednesday fans as well because I grew up on an estate which were half and half and and to this day I'll and Nick that 
some of my friends are, are big Wednesday fans and they go to they go home and away. But I'm Dane to them. I'm not Dane who scored two goals against us who maybe cost us league title, do you know what I mean? In 91, 92 or whatever. Um, because they always said, don't they, that if they if they would have beat us them two games, they might have won that league. But like I say. We know. We're not talking about them. We're not talking about them, are we? You know what I mean? We're talking about <laughs> us. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's move on to uh, Dave Bassett. What was he like to play under? Dave Bassett were, were great as a manager, as a one-to-one manager. Um, when things aren't going well for you, he'd come up and have a sit down with you and, and chat with you. Uh, I've, played with, I've played with managers who... They've all got the different philosophies. Uh, but if it weren't for Dave Bassett, give me that chance in first team, then I might not have been, I might not have played for them other managers anyway. Do you know what I mean? It would it would Dave Bassett who gave Mitch start, it would Dave Bassett who gave Mitch Ward his debut, it would Dave Bassett who gave a, a few other younger lads the debut. So he if you were good enough, he'd put you in. What about yeah. when you compare? Dave Bassett with, you mentioned other managers there. There's one that I know you, you played some really good football under. Howard Kendall, uh, God rest his soul. What was he like to work with? Yeah. I mean, Howard Kendall, I mean, just the name. Did he win European, did, or European manager with Everton, weren't he? Do you know what I mean? I think he won FA Cup with Everton. And he was in uh, Spain so, as so well. He came, yeah, he came, he, he came with, he, he came with the name. Um, but his, his way of managing were totally different to to his way to, to Dave Bassett's way. Um, two successful managers in their own right doing it their own way. Um, for me personally, as a player, and I know for other, I could probably say this to other players who played under Dave Bassett and then transitioned under our Kendall. It weren't a bit of a shock, but you play one style with Dave Bassett, and then all of a sudden a new manager comes in, he totally rips that style apart and wants you to play a different way. Now, as a professional footballer, you should be able to adjust. But I know I know players that I did play with didn't adjust or didn't fit into our Kendall's style of play. So he got rid of him because he needed, he needed his way and he needed players that could play his way for future games and, and, and for us to progress as a team. I think there was there were times under Spackman where we saw the whole team come together. Mm. And, and I think Nick and I have talked about this before. We thought without the sales that season, the blades would have gone up and have been back mm. in the Premier League. And if we could have just kept hold of those players with you, an integral part of it and the others. And of course, if certain things hadn't happened that season, I think it could all have been very, very different. I've said in interviews before, um, Al, that uh, we should have gone up that year. We should have definitely gone up that year. We were we were set out our, our team at that time. We were set out to win promotion that year, and like you said, uh, it wasn't. It, it, it were outside influences that uh, dictated teams coming in, spending money, saying this player's he's good, he's good. These have come in for this player. These have come in for that player, and to totally rip side up um, where. We were top of the league, weren't we? We were top of the league when they started to sell all players. I'm sure we were top of the league. If yeah, we, were, we were at least top two. If we weren't yeah, top, top we had games in hand yeah. and we were going to be top. Yeah, <laughs> on, yeah, yeah. We on, were the best on, team on, in that on, league, no no doubt yeah, about we it. Were, we were best team by far, mate. We were best team by far, on paper as well, because the players that we had oh. and the players that we attracted, I mean, David White, Von Kaid, um, we got Dino Bike, Vasper Borkis, yeah, like a few tough, yeah. yeah. Still had, still had, we had, um, still had Alan oh. Kelly and Simon Tracy, Paul yeah. McGrath, oh, yeah. exactly. Try Dallas, Jesus, you know what I mean? Nicky I mean, Marker, can't... Mark Patterson, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Stop saying I mean, names. What... <laughs> we could, I mean, what a, what a team, what a team. Hmm. And then you've um, got yeah. Wayne Quinn and Curtis Woodhouse and Lee Morris just waiting in the wings. Yeah. Come through, yeah. Roger Nielsen. We haven't even mentioned, you yeah. know, a quality side. Unbelievable, mate. Unbelievable. And like, like I said, it would, 
it were club politics that uh, I think cost us that that season. Short sighted club politics. Yeah, 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 definitely, mate. Absolutely right. So let, let's get off that topic because. I've had enough crying today. I don't want to cry anymore. <laughs> uh, let's talk about your friends in the dressing room. We obviously talked about Mitch already. Uh, who else were your mates in the dressing room? Um, well, Brad's, uh, me, me, Mitch, and Brad's. Um, we were known. We were known as the three slap shots, uh, which came from Cockney lads. Uh, basically, they were. A, I don't know if you know Nick, but um, they were. A, there were a film back in late eighties, early nineties called "The Slap Shots." It was based on, I think, it were three brothers in an ice hockey team in in Canada, and it were it were all about ice hockey and these three brothers. And if one brother got punched, other two jumped in, and and so on and so on. And they all stuck together, and it was exactly the same with me, Brad's and Water. Um, we. We stuck together on pitch. We stuck together off pitch. Uh, we knew each other's games inside out. Um, we played golf together. We went out for a beer together. We, we went out for meals together. But we also did that with other players as well. Mm. Uh, but my three closest mate. Well, and then do you, I don't know if you can remember, but um, we had a goalkeeper called Matt Dickens. Who we 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 sold to Lincoln. Um, he's a Sheffield lad as well. Uh, and he was a close mate of mine, but we—I think it were when we were about 20, 20 years old. Uh, Dave Bassett sold him to Lincoln, and then he ended up playing for Blackburn under Kenny Dalglish. Uh, and then he retired through a back injury. So there were there were four of us in respect. There were me, Big Matt, Carl, and Mitch, uh, and London lads used to have a really used to be a joke about it, saying, "Jesus, don't you ever leave each other alone?" You know what I mean? <laughs> in, we, were, we were in training together, like I said, we had a beer together. We, we were just together, all four of us. You know what I mean? It were great times, mate. Great times. Is it true that you could have left Sheffield United on a few occasions? <sighs> the only concrete move that I could have done were under Trevor Francis when he was at Birmingham. Um, I was it was just when we, it was season with Nigel Spikeman and and what it were it was towards the end of the season and we'd not start a pre-season um, and I think Birmingham were quite low down league they finished low down in, in, in the old championship um, and we just signed Vasper Borkis and we just I think we just got Paul McGrath and we went to Sweden um, for pre-season we did 10 days out in Sweden and then I had to go and see Nigel Spikeman in manager's office and he said to me he said that Charles Green who were managing director at the time had accepted a bid from Birmingham uh, so you needed to go and see Nigel Spikeman when we got back um, just to see where he stood regarding club and that well, we we're not even we're not even kick season off. Um, so I went I went to see Nigel in office. I said, "All right, Nigel." And he says, "Right." He says, um, "Charles Green has has come and spoke to me." He said they've accepted a bid, and it's down to you. So I went. Well, where do I stand, Nigel? I'm a 25 year old. Um, I'm a I wanted first team football. I wanted it preferably with Sheffield United because I could see things going. Really well because at side what we'd we'd kept under our Kendall and, and the side what Nigel had brought in, do you know what I mean? The players that he brought in. Uh, so I'd, I'd, I just said to him straight straight direct. I said, Nigel, I'm going to be in your plans for this season. He went, I don't want you to go anywhere. So I went, right, that'll do for me. I mm. said, that'll do for me. So I went to see Charles Green and uh, I said to Charles, I went, can you tell Trevor? I know, and I know Trevor. When Trevor had left Hillsborough, before he went to Birmingham, he used to come and train because he was one of Dave Bassett's close friends. And he used to come and he used to keep his fitness up uh, training with us up at Warminster Road. So I knew him anyway. Um, and I just said to Charles Green, I went, Charles, can you do me a favour, mate? Can you speak to Trevor and just say thank you for interest and opportunity? But uh, I feel as though 
we're going places at Sheffield United and Nigel don't want me to leave and I'm going to stop. Um, that. So that were, that was that was the only concrete move that I'd, I'd ever been in an office to, to negotiate. Yeah. And then I'd, I'd unbeknown to me, I'd, Charles Green had, had, um, had said some nasty things to Trevor Francis f- coming from my mouth. Um, Which hopefully then, Trevor knew wasn't true. No, yes, no Trevor, Trevor knew it weren't true, but the good thing that Trevor did, he run me up at home and I lived at, I lived at Mosborough at the time and I had, I had a phone call one, uh, one evening and it was Trevor anyway and uh, we were chatting away and he went um, and he said, I want you to come. I said, well, I said, no disrespect to Birmingham, Trevor, but um, Sheffield United, I said, we're going, we're going places this season and I, and I spoke to Nigel and Nigel, um, and Nigel said that uh, I'd, he wants me in his plans, and then he and then he said he said, "Did you tell Charles Green that you'd never sign for me, Trevor Francis, because I used to play for Sheffield Wednesday or managed managed Sheffield Wednesday, and you can't stand anything to do with Sheffield Wednesday and and so on and so on." <laughs> and I went, I said, "Trevor, I said I won't say that, mate. I said there's no way in this wide world I won't say that." He said, "Well, I needed to hear it from horse's mouth." Um, and then he started to say to me, he says, where do you live? And I went, Sheffield. <laughs> he went, well, you can still live in Sheffield. He says, come aside for me. You can still live in Sheffield. Um, have you got a car? I went, yeah. Um, is it paid for? And I went, no. I said, it's on finance. He went, right. He said, I'll buy you a brand new car. He says, what we'll do is we'll buy you an house down in Birmingham and we'll give you so many pounds a week and we'll give you this sign on fee and you can stay in Sheffield for three days a week and just come down to Birmingham for the last four days and and I went got to say oh, Trevor I've said no <laughs> I got to say it's not a bad deal <laughs> I Dave no. <laughs> I know I know can you can you speak and to Trevor I've got a terrible uh, PCP deal so I could actually really do with <laughs> someone paying for my car <laughs> some people found out about it Al um, I don't know how some people I, I think it were in papers saying that I turned down a move to Birmingham City. I remember it at the but time. Some people, yeah, but but some people had also found out why I turned them down and 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 what he and what sort of terms he'd offered me. Do you know what I mean? And I and I thought, how oh, on earth? I don't people know or what he or what he trying to get stuff out of me? Do you know what I mean? Just by feeding me, do you know, like a little giving me a nook, and do you know what I mean? And just like feeding me something so that I could like buy. Um, and it was strange. I don't. I spoke to a few people and said, I can't believe that's turned Birmingham down. You that 25 year old, you know what I mean? He said, you could be set for life here and, and, and so on and so on. I went, yeah, but United are a better team than Birmingham. Do you know what I mean? And and like it's it, it's strange. Uh, you speak to someone on the phone and then all of a sudden little bits get transferred to other people, you know what I mean? And you think to yourself, Oh, well, how's that gonna yeah. um but I turned it down, Al, uh, and he were he were he were good about it. Um, and like I say, he did he did offer me the world. He did offer me at that time. Um, you know, Dane. That at the time, I, I remember I said, the the, the, the rumour mill had sort of said that you turned it down simply because you were a blade, and he could have said you know any number. And it's like, no, this is my club. Yeah, well. You, you, you probably you, you're right, Al. You're right. I, d- I did say that I'm a, I'm a Sheffield. He knew that I'm a, I was a Sheffield United fan. He knew how close we were to club, uh, and he knew it would probably take a lot to to get me going. But in another respect, Al, if if Nigel Spikeman would have said to me, he said, "I'm progressing team forward, and I don't think you you might be in my plans, or you might not play as many games this season as what I." what you think you'd like to do if you want opportunity to go for another club then then I'm not going to stand in your way now if he would have said that to me Al do you know what I mean and because you need to know don't you do you know what I mean mm. I'm straight out middle me I either say yeah or no uh, and I, I expect other people to be exactly the same as me do you know what I mean don't sit on fence and 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 try and hide something do you know what I mean just, just say it you, you're either going to say yeah or you're going to say no. Um, I think that's a Yorkshire thing, isn't it? That, that, that is exactly, a Yorkshire yeah. thing that we yeah, all it respect. Is, it is. It's, uh, I think it's part, part, 
part of being a man, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's uh, and like I say, it's where you're from. Do you know what I mean? Don't don't try and go around houses. Just say it, yes or no. Am I going to be in your plans? Don't say, well, I don't know yet. Do you know what I mean? I'd just say yeah or no, and then I can take my football somewhere else. And then I think fans would have, because I've got a close relationship with all fans and club in in general. I think fans would have accepted that. Um, do you know what I mean? Me, I would have I would have come out in paper or I would have done an interview and said, look, I wouldn't have had an opportunity playing under Nigel Spikeman, so I'm sorry, chaps, but I've got to. I've got to go and take my football somewhere else. You know what I mean? Because I want, I want to play football. Did Did you ask Nigel Spackman for a car <laughs> and a house in Birmingham? I knew you were going to ask about the car. <laughs> the car was going to come back up no matter what. Car, I've been thinking years. about you it for what? ages. <laughs> you know what, Nick? I didn't jump on it, mate. Yeah. And I, and you know what? I think I probably could have done. I, think <laughs> I probably said, you know what, Nigel? If you don't want me to go to Birmingham, he's up. He's getting me that. So if you give me this to stop at United, then I'll think about it. You're too yeah. honest. But I never jumped on it. You know what I mean? Because I'm not like that. I'm the yeah, same. I'm, like and I'm the, Nick knows that I'm the same. If there's a bad deal to yeah. be had, I will have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's um, I've always been like that. I, honestly, whatever, whatever I've gone through in life, I've I've, I've always been like that, and. You, you do speak to people and you, you 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 hear people say like, well, you could have got double mm. by going back to Nigel and saying, you know what, Mark, he's, if he's willing to give you that at Birmingham, then why don't you go back to United and say, well, if you want me to stay, then pay for me to stay. But you're not that guy. I'm just in, do you know what I mean? I'm just in my house from Sheffield now. I was born at Woodthorpe. I'm... I'm just happy to put on a red and white shirt and to earn a living and put a roof on me. Do you know what I mean? So clip, clip love, that, Nick. Love to, love clip to hear that. that. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. All right, Dane, let's talk about, we've gone from having a little laugh there about the car, but we are going to talk about the the incident. Uh, I, I don't like talking about this. It still makes me feel awful. Away at Port Vale, that challenge from Gareth Ainsworth. What are your memories of that? One of the toughest... One of the toughest things that's ever, that's ever happened in my life. I'll, I have to admit it. You know what I mean? It's, it's that challenge, even though you're not known at the time, but that challenge ended up finishing my career. Um, a career that we're probably going somewhere in respect of oh, our playing. Our play. Our playing really well. Um, like you've, like we've said earlier, there were teams, there were teams looking to purchase me, uh, and what have you. Um, and all, and all I can remember is, it's an away game. Uh, you, 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 you're playing, you're playing football, and one minute I see ball coming across front of me, and next minute I'm on floor arriving in agony. Um, I didn't see him coming out. Uh, I know Mitch passed me the ball, but it just went a little bit too far. And I, I had to turn, like in, I had to do a double movement. I had to, I had to turn and chase after the ball because it had just run too far. But I'd not seen him coming. I, I could not see him in my eyes. You know what I mean? Sometimes you see a player coming into you, do you know what I mean? And, you, and then you can, you can anticipate what might happen in them next mm. few seconds. I honestly did not see him coming because he hit me from side. Um, and like I say, Hardy, I knew I'd done it. I knew I'd done my knee. Uh, it went snap, bang, pop, crack, uh, you name it. I heard, I heard absolutely everything. And when when physio came running onto the pitch, uh, I think it was Dennis, uh, Dennis Pettit. Mm. Um, he said, "What are you done?" I went, my "Knee's gone." I knew straight away. I said, "My knee's gone." He went. Are you sure? I went, I said, trust me. I said, I said, it's, I don't even want to look down. I don't even want to look down because um, I was in that much pain, do you know what I mean? But I could have, do you know what? I, I could have cried, but I could have laughed at the same time, do you know what I mean? Because I was in that much pain. Um, and I just tried, I just tried putting a brave face on it, do you know what I mean? Because I was in the middle of a football pitch in front of, mm. in front of 15,000 fans and, I just needed to get off pitch because I couldn't. He, he said to me, "Can you stand up?" I went, "Nah." I said, "I said I can't even bend my knee." 
I said, I can't even feel my leg. Um, and then he took me into uh, took me into changing rooms. Um, that happened at first half. Uh, starts my knee started to swell up straight away. Um, their physio came in, had a look at me. Uh, I ended up getting strapped up, and then uh, we'd finished game, travelled back to Sheffield, and then we dealt with our surgeons then and our physios at, at Sheffield United, and I was I were in hospital on on some, that happened on Saturday. And we're at Thornbury on Sunday morning and I had operation on Wednesday. So you had to go and, home uh, and sleep? Um, I went home on, yeah, slept with, with my knee strapped up. Wow. And then I rung up complaining that my leg were killing mm. uh, because they didn't know how bad it were. Well, they, no. they, they honestly didn't know how bad it were. So, Dane, realistically, if they'd known, you would have gone straight to hospital, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah were you taking painkillers? Yeah. Through, um, yeah. Were you taking painkillers as well that night? Um, I hope you were. <laughs> do you know what, Nick? I, I don't think you're allowed to. Right. I, I, I'm not sure, mate. I can't. It's, it used to be just the old school bucket of art. Do you know, ice and <laughs> hot and cold. Yeah. Um, so sponge. basically, you, you put heat on it for 20 minutes, and then you put ice on it for 10 minutes, then you put heat on mm. it for 20 minutes. Um, I'm sure I went. I'm, I'm sure I went home. And then I, I went straight to hospital the next day. Wow. Uh, and then I had, a, had an X, because we had no X-ray machines or anything like that at games now. They've got they've got all that stuff now. That, uh, and I know that they've got a portable X-ray machine at Sheffield United. So no matter what, they couldn't diagnose what I'd done because we had we didn't have facilities then, you know what I mean? Mm. So I was I was still sat in changing rooms at 10 to 6 at Port Vale. Uh, and then I, I got the trouble that. back on coach for an hour and a half um, going over when it's passed or whatever it is you know what I mean throw up bike wax from Port Vale uh, because we didn't do motorway in them days we did bike wax that must you have been so, absolute uh, agony yeah yeah uh, I couldn't move I couldn't move um, and was, then I went was, to, uh, I, was Mitch with you because I know I remember at, at the time Mitch was like holding your hand and you are on the stretcher and I know he was he looked as devastated as us fans was he talking to you in the coach or were any of the lads trying to keep you calm yeah, they, they, uh, we had a we used to have a big bed at back of coach, so that bed were either if anyone wanted to have a cat nap, if we we're travelling to London or have a weekend or whatever, or it were for injuries. Uh, so, because I got injured, I were on I were on that bed, so everyone kept kept coming up to me. Do you know what I mean? But Mitch always said that when you see a player go down, you know that something's wrong. Um, you. S- it's, it, it's, it, it's strange because you see players go down now and they get up after five minutes. It's different. So you, said to yourself, you, you said to yourself, and I'm not I'm not disrespecting them as players in this era or us as players in our era, do you know what I mean? But we hardly went down. Oh, it, 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 is it, it is different. It is definitely. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. different you, now. You, 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 you got a knock, you'd rub it off and then you'd just carry on. Um, but because I was so close to Mitch and, and all my team players, um, I think Mitch was one at first to come up to me. He was, and he grabbed my arm, and he and he and he, he knew he knew there was something wrong because the way I were. Do you know what I mean? Mm. If I, if I just got a knock, I'd I'd be like, ah, I'm alright, Mitch. I'm sound like. Do you know what I mean? But he mm. knew there was something more serious. He could tell, and you have that sense, don't you? We are mates, and I. Do you know what I mean? You you, you could tell. Um, and he and he said to the physio, so now he says. Dane don't stop down. He don't stop down. Uh, like a lot of other players, you know what I mean? It, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it wasn't just me. I'm not just saying that it, because it were me, but a lot of players that I played with, we, we hardly ever stopped down on pitch unless there was something serious, you know what I mean? Um, I've played with players who've... I mean, I, I broke my leg against Bristol City, Al, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't even know I broke it. I just thought he kicked me on shit. And... Frenchie yeah, carried me off pitch. He, he, he piggybacked me off pitch, Frenchie. Yeah. And he said, he, he came onto the pitch and he said to me, he said, what are you doing? I went, I said, my, my shin feels funny. He went, what do you mean? He said, can you put it to the floor? So I went, well, I'll try. So I stood up and I collapsed on the floor because I couldn't put my foot to the floor because my shin had gone. <laughs> and he went, he went, well, what are you doing? I went, well, he's kicked me on shin, but I feel funny. He went, what do you mean? I went, I feel dizzy, I feel sick. And he went, 
Right. Yeah, that's when you know. We just got we just got this portable X-ray machine at United at that time. So this were this were I think this were 91, 92. Um so I had an X-ray straight away in in, um, in physio's room. And you went, you're not gonna believe it. I went, what? He says, just broke your shin. I went, you're joking, aren't I? I went, no, he says, that's, that's, that's cracked my shin. He said, they're going to have to go to hospital. I oh, went, gosh. all right. So he, he put like a big, he put this inflatable bubble around it. So my leg were like in this inflatable. And I ended up going to hospital. And I was in hospital for three days. And I had operation after the fourth day. And then I went in hospital. And then I stayed in hospital for four days. And they pinned it. Do you know what I mean? So going back to that day when I got injured with uh, at Port Vale, I was still sat in changing rooms until 10 past six, until coach left. And then I, I travelled home. Um, and then I went to hospital the day after. Sports at surgeon, surgeon, um, see me x-rays. And he went, he says, you've you've done it proper this. And I went, all right. I says, can I just ask you a question? He went, yeah. And this were one of the top surgeons at UK, by the way, it's a, a thorn rare, a, a bloke called Mr. Bickerstaff. Uh, he used to do all sports players, and he and his and his field was knee injuries, and 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 sports injuries. And I said to him, "I said I've got a chance." He went, "Well, it's going to be tough." He said, "But if you have dedicated," I said, "Don't you worry about dedication." I said, "If you want me in that gym seven days a week, twenty-four hours a day, I'll be in there." Um, and I had long rehab and, and stuff like that, you know what I mean? And but it weren't it weren't meant to be. I I just couldn't I just couldn't get it back to a physical level to play football again. Nice. I don't like awful. hearing any of this. No, it's awful to hear. I really thought you were going to come back. I never crossed mm. my mind that day at Port Vale. I said to my dad, "This is serious," but I never thought that was it. We'd never see you. I mean, I went to your testimonial, but I never thought we'd not, yeah. not see you playing again. It's getting me upset now. I just think I, I know. I, do you know what? I had to. I had to make a decision. I were when I retired. I was twenty nine, and I had to make a decision on on what I've seen it pass with players that retired through injury and certain players that I've come across at Sheffield United who are in their later years who can't go in park to play football with the kids or can't. Mm. Or can't walk properly, do you know what I mean? So I had to make a decision on on where I wanted to be in 15 years' time. Mm. And where I wanted to be in 15 years' time, mate, where I didn't want to be a cripple. Um, so what I did, I got myself to a physical fitness that I could do everyday stuff. Like if my kids wanted to go and have a game of football or if my mates wanted to go and have a game of golf. The only thing that I can't do, Al, is I can't physically play football because I can't twist and turn. That's the only thing that I can't do. I mean, everything else, I mean, I can run up and down stairs. I can I can go for a jog. I can I, I cycle three times a week when I can. Uh, I still go to the gym, do you know what I mean? But the only thing that I can't do is put myself in a position playing football. And, and that's even football with your mates and stuff like that? That's even football with mates now, yeah. Because I can't mm. I can't twist and turn, Nick. I cannot, mm. I cannot twist and turn at pace. Well, there, goes, small, eh? there goes our you next question I mean? about getting Dane to play in our charity game, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Just going back to um, that Port Vale um, day, obviously, we, we, we don't want to talk about it too much, so this will be the last thing. I think a lot of fans want to know, because I don't know if this was kind of just something that uh, was a bit of a rumour, but was it true about your dad confronting him on the, uh, on the coach? <sighs> yes. Um, what a... What had happened, mate, is my dad used to come to every game and I couldn't drive that day. So my mm. dad was in my car and he took me to he took me to match. And then we used to go in players' lounge after. So we used to see players. My dad used to see players. My dad used to see players' families and used to have a couple of beers and what have you. But for some reason, um, because I were on crutches, I said to my mum were there as well and, and my uncle, they used to be my dad. It used to be my mum, my dad and my uncle that used to come to games. So my mum and my uncle said, well, we're going to go back to the car. So I went, yeah, I'm coming as well. I said, Dad, uh, hurry up. He just, he was just having a glass of Coke. Um, was this when, a home game? Was this a, a Bramall Lane? This one at Bramall Lane, yeah. We, we, this is I against got him, Port Vale I the next time. November, yeah. 
the next time we, we oh. played them in in return game, yeah. which were I think it was around about March time. That's right. It seems about uh, right. Well, I I were on crutches then because I were on crutches for nineteen months. Um, so we're on, I were on crutches then, but I couldn't drive because I couldn't. I would, my leg were locked up at uh, 180 degrees, so I had no knee bend. Uh, and I got, a, I'd not got an automatic car, I'd, I'd got a manual car. <laughs> Should have spoke to Trevor <laughs> so Francis. Dad, <laughs> yeah. I know, so, so my dad, uh, my dad used to drive. So after game finished, um, me, and my mum, and my uncle went back to the car, and like we're both looking at watches, thinking, well. Where's my dad? Where's my dad? Um, I'll go and look for him. I'll go and look for him. This is my uncle. So, um, behind behind stand at, at uh, main stand, which is south, it's 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 called I can't remember its name of stand, but I always call it south stand, didn't we? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm part of car park, and their coaches their coaches waiting underneath that veranda type thing that's on their entrance. Um, and I've seen this commotion, so I thought, oh my god, what's happening here? Uh, and then I've seen my uncle like pulling my dad away. So I thought no of it. Um, gets him in the car, he drives us home. So I went, What happened? He went, Well, I jumped on coach. You know? I went, What what have you done? He went, Well, I wanted to see him, didn't I? Because he's crippled my son. So I went, What you went on their coach? He went, Yeah, he said, but worst thing about it is they got the I think they come prepared for it because they got two security. But un- unbeknown to them, but everyone else knew at Bramall Lane that my dad used to work on security anyway. He used to be an old school bouncer, uh, and he used to do personal. He used to do personal security for a lot of big name people in seventies and eighties. So he weren't wet behind ears. Um, and what they'd done, they'd put two security on at front of the coach. So he walks up steps, and one of the security guys went, "What are you doing?" He went, "I'll show you what I'm doing." And he ended up punching both of them, knocking them both out, running to the back at coach, confronting for he didn't even have a clue who they were, these these players on back at coach, confronting four players at back at coach, uh, and basically pointing to every one of them saying, One of yours crippled my son. He didn't know it was him, he didn't know who it were, but I did get told that he weren't even on coach, he'd been ushered away. <laughs> <laughs> so the players that the players that he'd confronted weren't even weren't even know anything to do with it. And they were just, probably bricking the cell. He just said his mind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. He just said his mind. Yeah. Um, and then I I went to training on Monday morning and Steve Thompson went manager then. Mm. Uh Tomo. And after training, Tomo went, um, what are you doing this afternoon, Dan? And I went, I said, Well, I'm going to gym. He went, do us a favour. He said, can you pop down to the ground? Uh, he said, I need to see you in my office. I went, is this about Saturday? And he went, well, it is, yeah, but I just need to see you. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to say up here in front of all lads at training down. He said, can you just pop down like uh, after after dinner? I went, yeah. So I come down and um, down to office and there were a policeman in office and then there were Tomo and then there were me. I went, what's wrong like? He went, um, he says, when you go home today, he said, if you if you go to your mum and dad's, please tell your dad that he's more than welcome to come to this football club at any day at week. Because he did say that, he says, I've finished now. He said, if you're not playing, this is made my dad's exact words. If you're not playing, then I'm not coming to the game. He said, I've done my bit. I've said my bit. That's me done now. So then... This policeman, oh, I'm not sure if my dad got arrested on that night um, or he ended up having a word with his policeman. Well, this policeman used to live two doors up from me at Mosbury. So he stood in office with Tom Moore and Tom Moore said to me, he says, tell your dad that he's more than welcome to come to this football club at any day a week. He's only done what any dad would do regarding the kids. He's mm-hmm. gone. He's done some of which were, which was stupid at the time, but he's also done some of it from his heart. Uh, and policeman said exactly the same. He says, tell your dad that he's, uh, he's more than welcome to come down to this football club 
uh, any day a week. And I told him that, and my dad went, uh, he said, well, tell him, thanks very much. I did I did do something stupid, but I needed to, it's been burning up inside for a number of months. Do you know what I mean? And what happened to you, and also the way he dealt with it as well, and I'm talking about Gareth Ainsworth, the way he dealt with it as well, and I know you'll probably ask me about it, Nick, as well. You know what I mean? But and I, and I'll and I'll tell you, he had a lot on his mind, my dad. You know what I mean? And he, his frustrations got better him that night, and he did. He, he did say to me, he "said I'm sorry for showing you up." I said, "No, he said you're all right. You, you've done what you needed to do." Do you know what I mean? He said, "But that's me done now. I'm not, I'm not coming to the game." Uh, but he did go on coaching. He did threaten some of Paul Vale players, but I, to this day, I don't think it was him personally because I don't think I'm not coach. Did you ever? Did you ever um, get an apology from from Gareth Ainsworth? Do you know what, Nick? I've never. People make their people make their own conclusions, don't they? Do you know what I mean? And mm. a lot of fans, I've spoke to my closest mates about it, and I've spoke to a club about it back in day. Um, and I'm gonna. I've I've not really spoke to anybody, or I've I've not really, I've not really come out doing an interview and said what I needed to say. Mm. But I'm gonna make an exception because I'm 51 years old. It was 20 odd years ago. People need to know. People need to know what went off, and then and then people can then judge certain people in a certain way saying were that right or were that wrong now for me personally Nick I never got an apology I've never spoke to him personally man to man he's never come up to me man to man Um, I've heard through other people that he did send a letter took club apologising for what happened. Now, down at football club, you get lots of fan mail. Mm. Maybe out of 100 letters, you might get two that go missing. You can't, you can't expect, you can't expect to see every single letter, do you know what I mean? And that might be because it gets lost in post or whatever, do you know what I mean? So, I can honestly say that I never read that letter. I never received a letter from a certain person that I opened it up and I read it and it and it were stating about my that challenge on that day and he apologized. What I'm what I what I want to say about it, Nick, is that as a man who's injured a player on a football pitch in first half at his own football club, mm. he had numerous chances to come and see me. Numerous chances. He could have come in at half-time because it happened in first half. He could mm. have come in to change rooms at half-time to see how they were. He never did. He could have come in at full-time. We didn't leave until... We used to have a curfew after every game away from home where, say, for instance, you're playing away from home and the like. So, for instance, if I were from Port Vale and I'm playing for Sheffield United and all my family at Port Vale, get a chance to meet your family. So, they do a curfew after final whistle, be on coach at six o'clock. We're leaving at six. We did, we left after six. So, he still had he still had from quarter to five when game finished up until six o'clock because that coach was still at Port Vale to come and see me. He never came and seen me. I was in hospital for nearly a week. I had I had some visits in the hospital, Nick. I had a one visit. I had one visitor from Port Vale, and it was I don't know if you can remember. He used to play for Sheffield United years and years and years ago. A lad called Billy Dearden. Yeah. In um, I think he was part of Portville's era, uh, in Portville's era, and he was there yeah. physio at the time. I think he's based in Sheffield still. Mm. he came up and visited me in hospital. Why didn't he come with him? Why didn't Gareth Ainsworth come with Billy Dearden and visit me in hospital? 
I were on crutches for well over 18 months doing my rehab. In them 18 months, surely he's got spare time to come and visit me or to, or to ring me or to speak to me, man to man. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Uh, so this is this is where I get as a person I'm not I'm not a, I'm not an aggressive type of person I don't hold grudges you know what I mean and I do believe that he didn't physically go out that day and say right mm. I'm going to snap him in two you don't go out nobody goes out and plays football and say yeah do you know what I mean you might miss time a tackle or you might do this or you might do that but you but as a as a man you go up and you apologise to that person. So if you've kicked somebody on a, on a pitch, you shake his hand and say, oh, you're all right, mate, do you know what I mean, or whatever, and, and, and so on and so on. But if you've put somebody on a stretcher, then you know it's something serious. Mm. You make sure, as a man or as a person, that you go and see that person, do you know what I mean, and, and send your condolences or send your apologies, do you know what I mean, and, and see how you are. And then... If it's a long-term injury, I would have thought as a person or as a man, you express an interest in how his rehab's going. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So you're keeping contact uh, over coming months. Maybe one phone call a week, just say, how's, how's your training been this week? Are you, are you all right? Or whatever. Do you know what I mean? And um, you, tend to, you tend to make a friendship then, don't you? Do you know what I mean? Mm. As someone that you weren't friends before. All because you've you've been put on a stretcher. Mm. I had nothing, absolutely nothing, Nick. And and this is what this is what I mean. I'm just I'm, this is what boils my blood. Mm. As a person, I can't stand him. Mm. I can't stand him. And we don't we don't blame you one little bit, do we, Hal? No. Um, and I know a lot of people have put price on his head. I've had, I've had my friends say there's 500 quid on someone to run to pitch and smack him. Do you know what I mean? Well, Dane, it's... I mean, I was, uh, you probably remember this. I was at Walsall away. You were there. Yeah. I was I was in front of you. And uh, and Gareth was warming up. He was a sub. And he was running to warm up just near all of us away fans. And uh, all of us sort of turned around, saw that you were there with us. And the chant was, sort of, Dane's going to get you. Dane. You know, which, which of course you weren't going to do. But the fact that you were there with us. Yeah. That meant so much to all of us that you were a player, you'd had this awful injury, you could have reacted in a very different yeah, way yeah, to, the, to yeah. the club, you know. And yeah. the fact that you were still there as a fan, we all mm. we all loved you for that. I know, I know. Um, and that's where that's where I've enjoyed my time, you know what I mean? And uh, 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 Sheffield United as a player and and even as a fan, because I were a fan as well. Do you know what I mean? And 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 to have fans behind me in in this situation, uh, knowing full well. I mean, I still speak when I go down at games today. The old, I mean, it's twenty odd years ago. Al, you know what I mean? It's it's twenty odd years ago, and they still will never forget what happened. Oh, no, uh, never. And there's there's certain people that <laughs> I'm on Facebook and and what have you, and I'm I'm involved with a few like supporters clubs and like Answorth Blades and Lincolnshire Blades and stuff like that. And everybody, when he's on telly, have you seen that, Dan? He's on telly. Look at him. Just look at his attitude. Look at him as if notes happened. You know what I mean? And I said, no, I said, I'm not watching it. I don't want to watch it because I can't. I don't want to give him satisfaction. Do you know what I mean? And I did a... Um, I did a question and answering session a few months ago now for Pittsmore Blades. Uh, and he was at Firth Park Club, and one of quite one of one audience stood up and said, "If he walked into this room now, Dan, what would you do?" And I said to him, "I went, I honestly don't know. I think, I think what I'd do is it'd probably take some of you to hold me back because I think I'd have a go at him." Um, and I don't know why, do you know what I mean? He, he's, he, I'm not like that. And I don't want to be like that, do you know what I mean? But, and I don't, I said before, I don't hold grudges. And 
I try and respect people uh, in a way, do you know what I mean? That, that if you command respect, they, they command respect, do you know what I mean? But he's got no respect from me whatsoever. And he's got no respect from any Sheffield United fan who were there that day whatsoever. And it's all because the way he went about treating me as a player and as a person, mate, do you know what I mean? I'm very conscious that we we want to end on a high. Yeah. <laughs> and the last thing I want to do is end on this. No. So I'm going to try to think of something that is going to be <laughs> positive. So behind me, I have a collection of shirts and I, I always yeah. do this. I don't know if anyone's ever noticed. I don't think Nick's even noticed. I always, oh, I've noticed. All right. I always pick shirts that were worn by the guest and then I put them behind. But we've never yeah. done we've never done this, but I'm grasping for positives. So <laughs> of all the shirts I've got behind me. Yeah. Which was your favourite to wear? Um, right. Let's have a look. This is good, this, isn't it? Um, <laughs> My neck in shot. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know right. what? Do you know what, Al? You haven't got the shirt that Nick's got on. Well, I mean, I have. I just don't have it on display. <laughs> it's on display is it? So you want me to... You want me to pick a shirt what's hung up there, or do you want me to say that the one that Nick's got on were an absolute world beater? Do you want him to be honest, or do you want him to lie, Hal? I want to, honesty. Hey, it's honest, Dane. He's as honest as the day is long. You're absolutely right. It is Nick's. I was, I was, I was wrong that I didn't put that one out. I've had that, Nick. How many times have I had that one behind me as well? I know. Uh, do you know what Today. I thought you were going to say, Dane? I thought you were going to say the uh, the Chengdu Blade shirt. There, I thought you were going to say, oh, that was my favourite one when I played for Chengdu. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I one... thought I thought you picked. Hang on, I can't bear that one. The uh, the purple and yellow because it is a, quite a unique shirt, and I remember you playing very well in that shirt. Um, I do like every one of them, um, but I'm I'm just going to pick that lime green one because I think we started that craze in '89 at Leicester away with that shirt and. A lot of clubs the year after tended to go to Illuminous shirts, yeah. didn't they? Do you know what I mean? And and as you uh, can see there, that's two other shirts behind me yeah, exactly, yeah. that are Illuminous, and we've probably got five or six more of them. We had to change the stewards at Bramall Lane. Yeah. Stewards had to wear orange. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the Labour one was my first shirt. I think. No, I don't know. I don't think that one. That was 95, 96, that one. There no. is a slightly thinner stripes which i also have but again oh yes thanks, yes, thanks Dave, for pointing it yeah, out i haven't yeah. put it on display <laughs> yeah i can remember yeah yes yeah. that one yeah yeah and i think i think the wards one was um was we've under got, our kendall we've got that one under bassett and kendall and then we've got yeah. that one spackman I so that's shows. it yeah yeah i like to think basically i've had a shocker is what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i think I, that i would have to, i would have to say um uh, all that the aluminous one. Mate. It's because Nick models it so well. One. Yeah. Yeah, he should be on the catwalk. He's wasted here. Uh, I think <laughs> that is a better place to end it. Thank you for your time today, Dane Whitehouse. We really appreciate it. We want to wish you all the very best for the rest of the year. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Nick. It's been a pleasure, mate. And hopefully we'll have a great season, Paul.